Louvado seja o Senhor, chegamos na semana 10. Praise the Lord. We got to week 10. Message 10 was titled this. Look to progress for the building of the church. This week is full of rich subjects, very rich subjects that If well applied in our living the church life, we will cooperate with the Lord a lot. First, we'll see the relationship between the ministers of the New Covenant and the building of the church. Thank the Lord that for building, God needs ministers. So we will see that you are a minister, I am a minister, and we need to cooperate for the building of the body of Christ. And also, we will see about the importance of love in this building. Not only the use of our gifts, but also everything to be done in love for us to care for our relationship with our brothers and sisters. Also, we'll see about the proper exercise of our gifts, especially in the church meetings. We'll be covering each of those points now for us to develop this word and for the saints to be helped also in their meetings in this message and to convey to the saints the burden of this week full of freshness, of enjoyment and for the church to grow. First off, God wants to use you. God wants to use people, but God can only use people who are available. We can have proper people, but who are not available, who are not available to serve the Lord. So we need saints to be always giving to God an opportunity to use us. If we are proper people, but if we do not have time to serve the Lord, how can God use us? God will have to use people who are less proper, but who are available for Him to use. For example, we can mention the Lord Jesus Himself when He preached that Samaritan woman. That woman, she preached to the entire city. She was not a proper woman, but she was available for the Lord. And she made many men to be saved through her testimony. Another example that is very rich and precious too, it is the example of the army of David. I'd like to read with you here in 1 Samuel chapter 22. 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1. Uh, verse 21. David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adelam. Verse 2. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him, so he became captain over them, and there were about 400 men with him. So look at the situation of the man who got together with David. They were bitter in spirit and debt, and men who were discontented gathered to him. So David used this man who were available and worked in those men in a way that they became later his great army which brought to him great conquer and he trained those men and they became the warriors and brave men of David. God wants to use us since we are available and have time for him. Another important point are the, the tools that the Lord is using, here on page 22 says, besides that God gave us powerful tools to help us in preaching the gospel, like the Nemeco porting and the Expo book trucks. Our desire to serve with humbleness to increase more and more. Look at this, God is enabling us with tools that help us since we have this availability for the Lord. He gave us tools that we can use them, and these tools will help us to gain more people to the Lord. 
o motivo de falarmos sobre o amor. Moving on to chapter, page 22 says, the reason to speak about love, it is for the building. God desires to give us many people. Look at this, brothers and sisters. From here, a strong encouragement as for love. To serve in the church the saints, not only using our gifts, but also loving the saints. Because God actually wants to give people for to care for them. We'll be relating to many people. And many times, people are different from us. They think differently from us. They have different ways and practices than we do. We need to learn to deal with all of them and to love all these people. Not only in the matter of vision, not only in the matter of a character, but also of relationship. We cannot lose anybody that God puts in the church. Moving on, God wants to work in us so that collectively we are the proper vessels to contain fruits that He will give it to us. So, we are all necessary. In the church, everyone are necessary. We cannot choose who to serve with. We cannot choose who to meet with. If God welcomed him or her, we have to welcome everyone. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 says that we have to press on in love. And 1 Corinthians 14 So they will have to press and pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Love is the greatest way, and I also have to pursue spiritual gifts that want to bring more benefits for the body of Christ. That is, the gifts of, gifts of life, gifts that come from the growth of life in us. Thank the Lord. Every time that we open ourselves to God, we open ourselves to serve people in the church, we receive grace. And we serve people, and people also gain every time we serve them. It is important to point out, brothers and sisters, that when we serve the church, everybody wins. First, people win because we're serving them. Second, we also gain, but what do we gain? We gain grace. When we serve people with our gifts that we receive, we receive grace. And also God gains. Why? Because God promotes His operations in the church and build the body of Christ. Therefore, we gain, people gain, and also God gains. Continuing, the spirit of power that God gave us was to preach the gospel, to make us to speak to people our testimony. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, says that you shall receive power, and the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. This means that God operates in us, and this operation of God in us, because His testimonies, in other words, We share with others now what God has done in our life. So every time that we go through experiences, real experiences in our life, we can share our experiences and help people with our experiences. Continuing now to Tuesday. On Tuesday and Wednesday, the Daily Food will be speaking about that everything is actually for the collective. So the subject on Tuesday is the use of personal experiences on behalf of the body, and on Wednesday it is the build, building is collective. I'd like to read it to you this point in the Daily Food on page 25. Each one of us is important for the building of the church. God leads us day by day and make us have many and many experiences. But our experiences are for the body of Christ and not only for ourselves. Many are worried in only having gifts, but are not worried about the purpose of the gift. Gifts are for the building of the church, not for our individual profit. Therefore, gifts that God gave us are for the collective profit when everyone 
can gain all experiences that we gained, all the gifts that God gave us, all of that must be on behalf of the church for the building of the body of Christ. Everything that we go through, it, it is on behalf of his body, and we accept to go through sufferings because we have love. If we accept circumstances and we pay the price, others will also be edified. So I thank the Lord. Now going on to Wednesday, continuing on the collective edification, on page 27 we read, Gift was given to us and must be used in love for a profitable, uh, for benefit of the building of the body, but there's edification and the members cooperate with each other. So that there is building of the body of Christ, we need to use our gifts in love so that we may not cause division in the body. On the contrary, we must cooperate with every member of the body of Christ with the goal of, of obtaining their growth and building. It is quite important to realize that the building it is something collective, it's not something individual. Therefore, we will not be built alone. Or I cannot be built alone. You also cannot be built alone. If we want to be built, we have to be together. You and I, together with the saints, then God will promote a building up. Many times with people that we may not like them. People that many times we do not approve their way or their practice. But if God put us together, we need to learn to cooperate with each other so that there is building of the church. Building is important because it is our protection against the enemy. We are kept in the, in a, in the church when the church is built. The Lord even said that the gates of Hades shall not prevail against the church. The church is actually the church built. So if we are built, even if the gates of Hades is wide open, we will not be swallowed by this gate. On the contrary, we will be steady, together, strengthened by the edification. So we must be together with the saints. In this way, when we develop our play, our role, and we use our gifts, we always have to think, what am I doing to... Better yet, what am I doing? Is it building or not the body of Christ? When we are together with the other brothers and sisters, we are not just many virgins. Together, we are the bride of Christ. Look at this, brothers and sisters, you see? If we are just working individually, we will not be bride, the bride of Christ. We will we'll be the virgins of Christ. If we work together, we will be the bride. The, the bride built, the church built. Now on Thursday, on page 29, we read, The importance of love for the edification of the church. Here will be seen about built in love. Page 29. Following the truth in love, we grow in everything in Him who is the head, Christ, whom all the body fit together uh, by the help of every joint with the cooperation of each part may play its share for the description of itself in love. Once again, we are encouraged, encouraged with love. There's always a connection between love and building. Both walk together, hand in hand, love and building. Therefore, brothers and sisters, it is quite important that when exercising our gifts in the church, we do it in the love of the Lord. Here it says once again about tools, the tools that the Lord gave us on page 29. It says before that we need to consider the tool the Lord gave us. They are powerful tools because they are collective. For example, dynamic reporting, expo book, home meetings, and we can mention many others like the Onward Youth, 
All of that shows that God wants that there is our collective operation. So these are collective tools that once we practice together, will be built together, everything working for the building. And then he continues to a very precious point here, which mentions about the forgiveness. Here tells us that in case there's no mutual forgiveness among us, we lose harmony in a way that people who visit us will turn away. This shows that because of our attitudes or words, someone can be lost. Because we do not forgive each other mutually, we can make others to stumble. We need to pay the price and forgive each other mutually. For people to be saved and wanted to remain with us and still testify that in fact we love. The church is not an environment full of complaints, but filled with love, full of love. Lord Jesus, here speaks of forgiving people. Every time that we serve together, always there will be situations that may cause conflict, that may bring problems of relationship. What are we going to do? In these moments that we should exercise our forgiveness to learn to forgive people. In the church, we need to forgive and to be forgiven. This way we can walk together. Here tells us that we can lose people. Saints to gain someone, it is difficult. We walk so much, we speak so much to gain someone to the Lord. And then when we get to the church, we begin to serve. All of a sudden, for simple issues, minor things, we lose people for the lack of good relationship, for the lack of forgiveness. Therefore, we need to learn to forgive, to forgive each other so that others may not stumble and may not advance. For that we need to pay a price and renounce a lot of things to forgive others in a way that we do not lose anybody through which the Lord Jesus died on the cross. Continuing on page 30, be the peace of Christ, uh, the in your heart and be th thankful. When we have conflict with the saints, we lose peace. We are just pondering our mind, bringing problems, remembering things, and this only brings uh, loss for us. This doesn't help us to press on. So we have to learn to solve our problems, our relationship problems, with the saints so that we have peace with the saints and peace with the Lord. He says, be the peace of Christ, the judge in your heart. Uh, judging in our heart. So, if we lose peace, it means that something is wrong with us. We need to seek to reconcile with people, reconcile with the Lord, so that peace may reign back in our being. The result of love is peace, for the peace of Christ must reign in the body. On Friday, it tells us about the gift of prophecy, direction and building. And here, initially on page 31, speaks of edification is with people. That is, we cannot be built alone. To be built, we need people together with us. The best gifts are the ones that cause edification. We speak of edification, this implies in being with others. Once we are alone, we will not be built with anybody. We need to broaden our relationship with others, to broaden 
all of that to be with the saints and with people being built together in the body of Christ. Still on page 31 speaks of not going contrary to the Lord's direction. God's speaking for the apostle has weight and determined direction. It is different than speaking about personal issues. This speaking of God promotes building, for it leads us in the same direction. When we go against this direction, we cause damage for, because, because instead of building, we bring confusion to the saints. Saints, praise the Lord for the prophetic word. This word, which was given through the apostles to give a, di a clear direction to the churches so that all the churches may walk in the same direction. If all of us are humble enough, if all of us are simple enough, in the churches, we practice the prophetic word, the way we are receiving it. Saints, there will be a big harmony among us, all of us practicing the same thing, all of us speaking the same thing, not giving room for division, not giving room for conflicts. Because many conflicts happen exactly because we are speaking differently because we do not hear the speaking that it brings direction of the Lord for us. We have plenty of words, words that bring us personal encouragement, or that help us as for discerning one decision or another that we want to make. But the word of direction is just one. The word that align us, make us walk together in the same speaking. This word has a tremendous power of joining us together, of making us walk together, building the church. I'd like to encourage all of you to listen. The word that is giving us direction It's not just the word that we heard in the international conference. Besides that, the Lord is speaking every week in the different regions of the country and even in other countries. And all this word has been put in our portal of the Life for All Institute. It's been recorded. These messages are made available to us to listen to them and to enjoy them. And these words must be followed closely by us and brought to the church for us to walk in the same direction. This is will make us to walk strongly. And so, since you desire spiritual gifts, look to progress for the building of the church. Let us progress in this word. We should not only seek our personal building, but especially the, the building of the church. And this prophetic word is that find the church. Therefore, our desire it is that people who are gained by our preaching live in God's purpose and to enjoy church life together with us. Let us appreciate more this prophetic word. On Saturday, we'll see about the role of the minister of the New Covenant in the church meetings. The church meetings are not for us only to attend them. The meetings are for us to be active in them, taking our portion, contributing for everyone to gain. So on page 33 we read, if we go to a church meeting only to attend them, will we be cooperating with the church building? Certainly not. Certainly, when we, we participate actively in the meetings is that we are cooperating with the building of the saints. So, the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 14, encourages us to be active in the church meetings. And he tells us, if we all prophesy, 1424, Uh, but if all prophesy and a believer or an informed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all, and does see the secret of his heart is revealed. So falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. So Paul encourages the church 
We're all of them to be active and not passive. Not, we cannot be in a meeting distracted, looking at our cell phones, looking at our personal things. No, think about other things. Let us use that moment to exercise our spirit, to touch the Lord, to encourage other brothers and sisters. And in this way, we'll make those meetings to be more and more enjoyable, not only for us, but for all the saints. When we function, we manifest God, people are touched inwardly. This is what a minister of the New Covenant does. He brings the presence of God to people in a way that they, they testify that God is with them. Thank the Lord. That is why, brothers and sisters, we really need to function in the meetings. And finally, on Sunday, speaks of the, the model for the church meetings. What it should be like in our meetings. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, how is it then, brethren, whenever we come together, each one has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. We can have different gifts, but all of them should be for the edification. Paul says here, in this verse that we just read, How is it then, brethren, whenever we come together, each one has a psalm, teaching, this and that, for what? Everything... All things be done for edification, for the edification of the church. So in a church meeting, the first brother, look at this, in a church meeting, one brother stands up and says, contributing for the edification, with his portion of the word, enjoy the word. Then another brother stands up, this last one, besides of not... Uh, helping with the building. He criticizes the one who spoke before him. He begins to say differently than the first brother who spoke. How will the church be feeling? This will not bring edification. On the contrary, it will cause damage to the church. So let us use church meetings only to bring life, only to bring enjoyment. The church meetings are not to express contrary opinions. The meetings are not to express conflicts, are not to express our opinions. The church meetings are to express life, to bring life to others, to contribute to edification, to prophesy the word of God. So, if we practice in this way, the whole church will be built, the guests will be built. Continuing, we need to consider always what to what we do will bring edification of what we are speaking and doing will bring no profit since nobody understands us. That is, when we speak in the church meetings, let us not speak in a way that no one understands what we are speaking. No, let us say in a way that the saints may enjoy life, touch life, that is, let us not bring different words that nobody will understand it. No, let us bring the prophetic word, the word of life, word that the saints are enjoying, the saints are sharing for the church to be more and more built. Concluding, God wants to build the church. And his, your gift, it is for this building. Your gift, it is for God to be manifested that everyone can realize that God is among us, that there is harmony in the church meetings. For our God is not a God of confusion, but God of peace. Saints, this is what God wants to bring to the church, to our meetings. It is uh, edification and harmony where all brothers and sisters feel well in this meeting. We do not want, in a church meeting, the saints do not go because they will not be built, or because there will not be an environment, a good environment for them. There will be a certain brother with a conflict with him. No, the church meeting must be the best place. We all must rejoice when we are going to a church meeting, knowing that there will be a place of enjoyment, a place of satisfaction, a place of joy. So we must prepare this environment uh, of enjoyment, of joy, 
the glorious environment for all brothers and sisters to feel pleasure the church meetings. May God bless we all this week and that we all may release this word for the saints to encourage the church for us to be active in the building of God's house. Jesus is Lord.